Good morning. Yeah, true stories in the life of Ronnie B. Hope you're not bored yet, because we've got a lot more to come. At the moment, I'm in Timaru, and it's a long weekend, it's a, it's Labor weekend, and the wife, my wife's left me. She's gone down to Alexandra with her son, Michael. She's got a sister down there called Pat. She's gone to see her. And they're going to go around and have a look at uh, the old house where their par her parents used to live and stuff like that in Clyde. So I'm here by myself with the dog. Beautiful dog. She's in love with me. I'll show you what she looks like. She I'll, get I'll get her to have a talk to you. Just a minute. Here she is. Isn't she beautiful? Storm her name is. It's Michael's dog. I can do anything with this dog. Slept with me last night. Great little dog. Aren't you Storm? We had a big walk this morning, didn't we? Hey? Yeah. Yeah, good dog. Good dog. Isn't he beaut? She beaut. There you are. What do you think of that dog, eh? Isn't she a little beaut? No, my wife really hasn't left me. She would never leave me. We've been married 48 years, you know. Not a bad record. Yeah, we've been through some hard times too, and we've stuck together. Like I said at the start, when I got married, I made a commitment. I said, I'm never gonna, I, I'm never gonna get another wife. I only ever want one, one wife, and I've got a bloody beauty. Yeah, a bloody beauty. I fell on my feet when I met her. Okay, now we're going to talk about some stuff. Uh, yeah, Alexandra. Let's go back to Alexandra again. I just meant I got my uniform. Right, I'm back in my uniform again. I got the towel around my neck because I'm talking about shearing again. You remember this, the reason a shearer needs a towel is to swipe white the, the sweat from his brow. Okay. House in Kenmar Street. When I was working for the loan company in Hamilton, the bloke came round to see me and he was from the Northern Building Society and he sold me some shares in the Northern Building Society. He said, one day you'll need those to buy a house. And sure enough, uh, when I did get married, the money was there for a deposit on a house. We had some great parties at Kenmar Street. I told you about some of the parties. Um, the flagons, we used to... It was flagon beer in those days, and people would bring a, bring a jar with them, or flagon of beer. Uh, and they always left their jar, uh, and so the next morning, the, 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 the one that had the party could go down and cash them in and get the, it would pay for the supper. Anyway, this particular day, um, we had a party, and I said to Margaret, well, I'll go down and take the jars down and get some money. And she said, well, take Kerry with you. That was my little daughter. Uh, and so I dressed her up in a nice little pink outfit. That's why I got the pink towel on today. Um, she had a little pink pink bonnet, bonnet and she looked good, really nice. And I took her into the into the pub and I put her on the bar because I was proud of her. Jeez, I was proud of her. And I was quite off to all the boys, you see. And 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 I've told her lately, uh, in recent years, that I she sat in the bar in the in the middle pub in a, a Alexandra. The flying squad from Dunedin used to come up. We used to drink on a Sunday, and the, and, and the flying squad came from Dunedin. And they'd always give us a warning that they were coming. And uh, the, the publican would get us out of the pub uh, and put us in the freezer. And we had to drink our beer in the freezer while the cops went through and searched the place. Just a stupid... They knew we were there. We were all married, us shearers. Uh, we had families. We went to the Golden Shears. The shearing, the shearing group that I was with, we were we were very good people. We we um, we weren't the rough type, you know what I'm saying? We played rugby. I was fit. Jeez, I was fit when I was playing rugby, uh, and and shearing. Uh, yeah, I, I went down to uh, uh, Mania Toto and I shore 307 half-bred merinos once. 307. And my father-in-law, Fred McSkimming, said to me, Did you know you've just broken a world record? You're the only man in central Otago to shear th over 300 uh, half-bred merinos. Yeah, I was pretty, pretty chuffed about that. Michael and Gus 
were my two stepsons, and um, Michael was a bit of a hard case, always had a mouth full of lollies. His, his mother spoiled the hell out of him. Gus, he was a, he was a bit more reserved. I, uh, he could run. Oh, he used to give me cheek and I'd chase him and I could never catch him. The name was Kennedy, and I didn't like the name Kennedy, and I didn't want this, my sons being called Kennedy. And, uh, and I really wanted a son of my own, you know. So then I had a phone call one day, and, and it was the doctor, and he said, oh, well, you've just, your wife's just had another baby. Oh, is that right? I said, and what is it? Is it a girl or a boy? He said, it's a girl. Oh, that's the case. Then put it back. I want a boy. Yeah. I, I tell her this story, and she doesn't like it. <laughs> she gets a bit upset. But she's a good sort. We get on well. She always reckoned she was adopted when she was a teenager. She said to me, oh, she was adopted. But she's not adopted. She's a, she's a bishop, all right. She's one of me. Um, the price of shearing in Alexandra dropped. It went down with the price of um, wool. And uh, Murray said to us, well, you get the, we're going to have to drop the price of shearing. And I said, no, I'm not dropping the price of shearing. I said, I'm in this game to make money. Not friends. It's not a job. It's, I'm here to make money. And if I, if I have to drop my price, I'm out of here. And with that, I got on the phone and I rang my old mate, Bill Williamson in Ashburton. And I said, Bill, how much are you paying for the shearing up there? And he said, £7.10 a hundred. And I was bloody side better than £5.10 a hundred, uh, which Murray wanted to pay me. So I said, come on, family, let's sell up and go north to Ashburton. And when I got there, the first thing I did, I took my two boys, Gus and Michael, down to the courthouse and said, these two boys, I want to become, want them to become uh, my sons. I want to adopt them. So I adopted them. And I took them home and I sat them down in the lounge and I said, Gus and Michael, today I became your father. You are my sons. As from the day you, today you call me dad. I'm your dad. You are my sons. Because I didn't want a, a, a stepson relationship that wasn't any good. And we've built a wonderful relationship. I've built a wonderful relationship with my two, two sons. I treat them like my sons, even though they're my stepsons. Okay, I'm going to have a breather now. You've got five minutes, and I'll come back and tell you what happened at Ashburton when I went, we went to Ashburton. Okay?